What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the mysterious death of Jackie Sutton. Jackie Sutton was a fearless 50 year old former BBC journalist. Jackie was currently acting country director for IWPR, which stands for Iraq for the Institute of War and Peace Reporting a non-for-profit journalism organization. She was also an advocate for women's rights. Although her job was very dangerous, Jackie loved her job and was very passionate about helping other people. Her main focus was on those who genuinely needed help. If anything, the danger made her more resilient. Her work was very important to her and many relied on her as you can see in the interviews. So could you tell us again who you are, what organization you come from, and what your connection to that started the Iraq is? My name is Jackie Sutton, and I work with UNDP Iraq. I'm the manager of the media program, and UNDP is co-funding um, the al al-Iraq news agency. We've been supporting as well al we've been supporting as well al al-Iraq for the last uh, three or four years. The reason that Aswat al-Iraq is so important for the Iraqi media sector is because it's independent, it is editorially independent, and it guarantees a media pluralism for Iraq, which is very, very important. What, um, what's life like for journalists in Iraq since 2003 in the midst of all of this conflict? Iraq is the most dangerous country in the world for media professionals. And I have to say that on a personal level, I have nothing but respect for those Iraqi media professionals. I've been meeting with Azrat al-Iraq media. I've been, we I've been meeting with Azrat al-Iraq, and I think their commitment to independent and responsible media is something that is an example for media professionals across the world. Um. Without putting words in your mouth, would it be fair to say that that um, Iraqi journalism in general, maybe Aswat in particular, is is relatively speaking a success story in spite of all of the problems? You do have a genuine ethos of journalism emerging, uh, as as demonstrated in this agency. I think one of the comments today in the meeting with Aswat Al Iraq was that Aswat Al Iraq is at the forefront of a revolution in responsible media. Since the fall of Saddam, there has been a blossoming of the media sector. There have been many, many print and broadcast media outlets emerging. Not all of them are responsible. Not all of them are objective. And most of them do not display the kind of professionalism and responsibility that would not only help the media set to develop, but that would also help to act as some kind of guarantor of security. So a responsible professional media is both an important factor for journalism security, but it's also something that shows that the Iraqi media sector really is maturing incredibly rapidly, and that is a tribute to the Iraqis, not to any outside help. Mm. Um, so they've come a long way editorially. What would you say the main challenge is for Assad al Iraq now? Um, well, I think journalism safety is a priority for all media outlets in Iraq, and Aswat al Iraq is not immune to that. They've had employees killed, they've had many people threatened. Um, I also think that they have to survive financially, which is very, very difficult because they don't have uh, a lot of party-based backing. They are independent and independence comes at a sacrifice. And I think, again, we need to help Aswat al-Iraq to um, develop a very, very strong a sense of, of a business plan and a business model so that the editorial independence is also founded on financial independence and long-term sustainability. And are they helpful that? I think so, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Perfect. On October 18, 2015, Jackie arrived at Instabal Airport from London. 
She arrived at approximately 10 p.m. that evening where she was due to catch a connecting flight to Embril, Iraq. Her connecting flight wasn't due to leave for the next two hours. During the two hour waiting period, CCTV footage captures Jackie walking around the airport. At one point, she is seen entering the airport cafe where she orders a beer and she sits there for about an hour and drinks her beer and reads a book. Afterwards, she can be seen making her way back to the waiting area where she fell asleep. Despite the intercom announcement for boarding calls, she remained unconscious. Minutes later, Jackie awoke to find that her flight had already left. She had accidentally slept through her flight. Jackie can then be seen approaching the workers at the front inquiry desk. Workers say Jackie appeared very disappointed about her missed flight and displayed a brief moment of distress. She then attempted to purchase another ticket but didn't have enough money in her account according to them. Her funds had been denied. Jackie then left the inquiry desk and proceeded to the women's restrooms. For the next 10 minutes, there can be seen different women entering and exiting the restroom. Nothing out of the ordinary. Shortly after, three women walk into the facility together. They discover the body of Jackie Sutton hanging in what appeared to be a suicide. They immediately flee the restrooms and inform officials. Officials rule Jackie's death as suicide. When family members and colleagues were notified of the horrible news, they were stunned. And they believe her death was a result of murder, not suicide. After reviewing the CCTV footage for themselves, they noticed that even after the reported incident with the plane ticket, she appears calm and collected as she heads towards the restroom. Anthony Borden, a member of IWPR's Middle East team who knew Jackie very well said that money shouldn't have been an issue. Frankly, experienced travelers miss a flight and they feel pretty much relieved. This was true for Jackie as well. Furthermore, he stated that IWPR would have paid for the airfare. During further investigation into Jackie's death, investigators found that she was actually carrying thousands of euros on her. That was more than enough to purchase a plane ticket. Therefore, that couldn't have been the reason why she would have taken her own life. Jackie's family and colleagues were adamant about the fact that she was murdered, saying that she had a lot of enemies, particularly ISIS. Jackie was not shy and she made it very known. She spoke relentlessly about this group to the media. She also received a million dollar grant to fund her efforts in stopping this terrorist group. Many believe that the group is responsible for Jackie's death. Till this day, the reasoning behind her bizarre death remains a mystery. What do you guys think about this case? What did happen to Jackie Sutton? What are your theories? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you like videos like these, check out my last episode. I will leave it linked on the screen right here. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my future episodes. And I will see you guys next time. Merry Christmas. Bye.